Hey guys, if you live in a cramped space, you need to listen up. I hear all the time that I can't do anything with this space, it's just too small. And you know what? Uh, I think I hear it right now. Ricola, Ricola. It's not true. There's lots of mistakes I'd be making, but we're gonna fix them today, right now. <laughs> Ready? Tiny house hack number one. Oh my gosh, handle your envelope. I know, what does that mean? I'm gonna tell you. The deal is your envelope is your walls, your ceilings, and your floors. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that it's all the same color. Tiny spaces, no room to play with on this paint thing. So you want your baseboards, your doors, your trim, your walls, and your ceiling all the same color. Take a look at these spaces. This really makes these things look bigger. And it doesn't matter, guys. It can be white or light like these two, or it can go totally dark like some of these, and it still works. Why? Because there's nothing that will visually break your eye up from a color perspective. So handling your envelope part one is that. Now guys, give me five seconds. If you're new to my channel, it really makes a difference if you can subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time I drop a fun new video and it really helps out the channel. Handling your envelope part two is dealing with your floor. Here's the deal, guys. You don't want any visual breaks in your floor, with the exception of the bathroom if you've got a closed door and tile. The bottom line is you want that floor to all be the same look and or color. Now, the key is this. You guys all want kind of those fun little, you know, area rugs and things like that. Skip it. When you're in your small space, you gotta make your area rug, if you're even gonna do one, match the floor, just like you see here. Do you know why? That way, there's no visual break to this. See how nice and generously scaled these rooms look? That's the secret to making your tiny house feel gigantic. Hack number two. If you're in a studio apartment, which means you open the door, bam, you see everything except for maybe the bathroom, that really qualifies as a studio. Here's the deal. You need to create some level of visual interest. Bingo, your room divider comes into play. Now, I love them, but you gotta get clever with them, especially if you're in a small space. Look at things that are options that will help you. I love this one that's storage. Always a good thing when you're in a small space. Two, I love the idea of something that's clear glass. It shows a little bit of a divider, but it doesn't completely break the space up. I also love this one that's kind of a focal point art painting and a room divider hung over the sofa. That's a great little solution. Now, you can always opt to a ceiling hung drapery in the same color as the walls and the ceiling. That's not a problem either. Just depends upon what will work great for your space. But all of these are important to kind of give the space a little bit of dimension and intrigue if it is all one space like a studio. Okay, now number three, and this is an oh my gosh, but I see it all the time, is furniture that is the wrong scale and not doing you the right things. What do I mean by that? Oh my gosh, you've got to get super, super specific about what you're going to put in these smaller spaces. Perfect example, this room, everything in there. Oh my gosh, there's three sofas in there. That's never gonna work. And they're all the normal size, come on. What you need to do is you need to avail yourself of smaller pieces. Now, the great thing now, guys, is there's so many vendors out there that have gotten really smart about the fact that a lot of us live in smaller square footage. So you see beautiful things like this little apartment scaled sofa, which is great. I love this little Barcelona uh, day bed, which has a, a tiny little table next to it. That's all great. Think about things like built-ins if you can do it, like a little banquette that's narrow up against the wall. That gives you a lot of extra room. Or 
get clever with your furnishings about flexibility. Things like this C table that's on wheels. So skip the sofa table altogether. You probably don't have the room. Use this thing, roll it around. Or grab one of these tiny little drink tables if you want an accent place to put your drink while you're kind of sitting in your pretty small little sofa for the area. And of course, we never want to forget kind of the bistro table solution for that dual worktop and eating. Couple of little nicely scaled chairs. They're perfect and they're gonna make the space feel larger. Now, tiny space hack number four is turn your space into a boat. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, this little tiny space needs to get serious about its storage. When you look at a boat, take a look at this room. This is a stateroom in a boat. And behind every bit of those panels is all kinds of shelving and drawers and all kinds of storage space. So here's the key. You gotta get serious about this. Think about things like the space between two studs. I love this image. They actually just blew that area out, painted it all dark, and made it a bookshelf. Focal point as well, so that's really good. Or how about thinking about the space above the doorway? You can have a shelf or two up there. And think about this, you're gonna wanna throw some big baskets, put the <coughs> in the baskets, and then it looks really lovely up above those things. Or think about furniture that you can really use as storage pieces and furniture doing double duty. Things like bunk beds, those take you up. Things like wall desks that fold down from the wall and then fold up when you're done. Or how about this wall desk with bookshelves attached? That's a great solution. Storage beds are also good. And I love this one where they've taken an Ikea Pax closet, they've popped open the center, thrown their whole office in there, sits on a stool, pack it up when you're done. That whole thing is a pocket inside a pocket. You can get so much storage done if you play it smart, pretend you're just sailing away in your own little apartment. Okay. Now, tip number five, that's a tiny apartment hack, and it's my favorite hack, and people don't know about this, which is the following. Pick one single focal point and make it a big one. I'm talking about big artwork pieces. I am talking about something that's really sort of major in the space. Now, why would I do that? Why would I go to something so large in a tiny space? Because when you isolate the attention to just one thing and it is generously sized, the rest of the space tends to disappear and feel larger. Guys, you have to trust me on this one. You can use large artwork. I love this great pair, that's fantastic. Or, I love this collection of hats. Notice that how they're clustered together makes them read as a single point. And that's a very dark little small space, but it's good looking and that's where your eye goes, is to those hats. Or, can't miss this room divider that actually acts as a major standing piece of artwork. That's fantastic. Or if you don't have anything big that's an artwork piece that you can use, think about mirrors. Those are fantastic as well, but you gotta go big on that mirror. So see if you can find one either at a thrift store or wherever you need to go to get one. Now, here's the deal guys, skip all the dainty little gallery styles and things like that. This is not where you play them. You go here with this and I guarantee you, you're gonna feel like you're living in a palace. If you wanna get more answers to your design problems that I can really give you kind of in a shorter video, then you really gotta check out the Design Club. It's an amazing place where there's lots of answers. You can talk to me directly. It's really a great thing. So check that out and be sure and check out these other videos on small spaces. I'll see you soon.